Hey everybody, it's Brett here. Hey, making a quick video today um, on the TTM squeeze and how I use it. And most of you know, I post a lot of charts in Slack. I love charting. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I make reference to the TTM squeeze quite a bit. And I have had a number of different people ask me kind of what that is. Um, and so I just wanted to make a video on exactly how I use it, you know, what it is, uh, because this was the one of the first trading uh, systems that I was ever trained on and I still use it. I absolutely love it, especially for options plays. So I'll, I'm going to explain this as best as I can in the way I was taught. I'll show you how I use it. I've got a bunch of examples. Uh, I'll try and keep this short, but again, uh, make no promises because I, I just freaking love this indicator. So uh, the two team squeeze, what is it? Well, it helps identify periods of, of compression and consolidation. When you're looking at options, right, market makers price in the expected move, right? Uh, one standard deviation of the current price or, or 68.2 percent uh, if price stays within that range right market makers tend to make the most profit by letting those options expire uh, as far as i know in the way i was taught they do not take the ttm squeeze into consideration and so the ttm squeeze can help identify when uh, the market is about to really enter a period of focused conviction with a greater than expected move 80 percent of the time the markets in chop trade sideways no conviction the TTM squeeze helps identify the remaining 20% and allow us to take advantage of those greater than expected moves, provided the timing's right. And so what the TTM squeeze is, you have the Keltner channel, which is plotted as an envelope, and depending on whichever multiplier you choose, is one ATR, one, I use a one and a half, one and a half ATR from the moving average. Then you have the Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands, which we all know what those are, is plotted along with the Keltner channel. What the TTM squeezes is when the Bollinger Bands go within the Keltner channel, and that is called the squeeze. And when it's within the channel, you've got very tight price action. And when it moves out of the channel, that's the squeeze firing, if you will. That's where you can get the greater than expected move. You can almost think of it like a spring. You're holding a spring, it's compressed, you let go, bam, fires. Or if you're holding that tiny puppy in your arms and things squirming, eventually it's gonna get out of your arms and take off, right? That's exactly what the TTM squeeze is. If you're playing options and you time it right, you can get that greater than expected move and, and capture more of a profit. But the biggest challenge is timing, right? If you get the entry wrong, I mean, you can get sucked into the chop, you can get your premiums just cut to bits, your P&L can go down, things like that. I've found this for me, uh, gives me the greatest edge, you know, if I'm playing options or even stocks. Um, but typically for options. What is a TTM squeeze, right? Well, this is the TTM squeeze indicator here, okay? You have a momentum histogram, and that's all this is, it's just a momentum indicator. The dots here are the squeeze, right? So when the dots are red, the Bollinger Bands are inside the Keltner channel. When they're green, it's outside, simple as that. All this does is replace the overlay, right? I don't like having the overlay on because I like to have clean charts. This just tells me when we're in that squeeze. So, but for the purposes of this, I'm gonna leave mine. I have SE up here, right? I am in this trade right now. I got in yesterday. And so I use the TTM squeeze as a setup tool to find setups that I like. And then I use other forms of confluence to take a trade, if you will. So when I was looking at SE yesterday, I noticed, A, we've got a nice head and shoulders pattern, or uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern going on right here. Right? I'm a big, big chart pattern person. I love them. So that was number one. Number two, we were right at resistance. And number three, this candle pattern here, I believe Jeremy would describe as the battalion of soldiers, right? Down, up, down, up. So my thought was, if we close over, we have a good chance of continuation, right? Couple that with the fact that we're in a squeeze, we have a momentum indicator that's rising. This trade was a no-brainer for me. And my thought would be, if we can get outside, or get the Bollinger Bands outside, we'll get that greater than expected move. And so that's what I'm looking for on SE. Uh, if you look at TDOC, oh, this is a great example. I love this one. I, I'd been posting about TDOC quite a bit this week in Slack. I know Jeremy and everybody in Slack, I mean, have been bullish on TDOC forever since before I even joined. So that's nothing new. But what I was looking at for my own personal trade this week was with a nice symmetrical triangle, right? Trade up, trade down, trade up, blah, blah, blah. At some point, it's gonna get tight. Price is gonna move one way or the other. It's gonna, either gonna move up, it's gonna move down, right? We're in a TTM squeeze here. We can see it. I put the overlays on right there. Yeah, we can see how compressed that is within there, right? Price is staying right within. Of course, we have the hammer candle up to 200. That helped. This day that we gapped out, just like a spring, Bollinger Bands are now outside the Keller channel. Price explodes. 
in theory, we should get six to eight bars on here of positive momentum, right? That's typically what they say, six to eight bars. Now, the fun part about this one, you go to the weekly chart, TDOC is in a weekly squeeze as well. All your bands are within sign, positive momentum moving on the way up. And if we continue on, we can get a weekly squeeze that fires as well, which is why I'm such a huge fan of the measured move. I think I'd posted about the bull flag up bull flag measured move on the flagpole we could get to you know 375 90 potentially in the squeeze you never know that's really all the ttm squeeze is is identifying periods of tight consolidation uh, and you can use it with other factors of confluence to really enhance your trading so what what do i use it with well number one i like to use stacked moving averages so i'm going to take off the overlays real quick and i'm going to go back to i'm going to go to fiverr here i am in fiverr right now for my moving averages personally i use the 821 the 34 and the 50. Those are my primary ones that I use. I run them as EMA clouds. And so I can see here, obviously we're in a nice uptrend, of course, we have stack moving averages. On my scan that I have, we are in a TTM squeeze here. That looks like, again, if we plot the overlays, we can see the Bollinger Bands are compressed within the Keller Channel, right? So we're getting this tight price action. And so what my thought process was and why I entered Fiverr was number one, what are the confluences do we have? Well, I mean, we have a double bottom, right? We also, if you take into account uh, Matt DeLong's um, swing strategy, right? We closed below the 10 EMA, or I use the 8, the 8 EMA, and the next day we closed above it and we're above the 50. Plus we have a nice morning start reversal. And so I did take a half a position uh, towards the end of the day on this one, uh, just because it was so extended above the eight. And I had set a 50% retracement for my other half, which of course hit the next day. But if you look at the squeeze, we're still technically in the squeeze right now. So even though we've made a nice move, the squeeze has not fired yet, but the positive momentum is on the upside. So this is one that I'm, I'm planning on holding for a little while. There's a number of different ways to enter in a squeeze. I mean, some people wait till the squeeze fires at, um, you know, when the, when the Bollinger Bands move outside and the, the dot turns green. My thought process is I want to identify it earlier because if you look at fiber as an example, I mean, we've made a nice move. The squeeze hasn't fired. So if I'm waiting for the dot to turn green, you know, I might be entering up here uh, versus getting in closer here. Depending on the situation, I try to enter within an ATR, the 21 EMA, if at all possible, um, unless the stock is in a really strong uptrend and, and really respecting the eight. So th that's pretty much how uh, I enter the squeeze. As far as an exit strategy, if I get a close below the 34, I'll exit. Or if I hit uh, my predetermined target, I'll exit. Typically for options, I on whatever time frame I'm using or entering on, I usually sell my options right at the 1272 extension. For stocks, I will obviously hold a little bit longer. You know, the fun thing about the squeeze too, and I'm just gonna pull this up now I'm thinking about it, the SPY. The SPY is in a squeeze right now, right? So if we pull up the overlay, look at that, Bollinger Bands. Inside the Keltner channel, squeezes on, momentum indicator moving to the upside. Squeeze is not fired yet, but if you look in closely, and I know the SPY is pulling back right now, probably on a retest, but. I mean, that, that thing's getting close to firing. The Bollinger Bands, my guess would be Monday, uh, based on this move, will probably be outside. So I'm gonna guess the squeeze will fire by Monday. And then in theory, we can expect six to eight bars, positive momentum to the upside. Now, when I say six to eight bars, so when the squeeze fires, right, the momentum indicator goes, I'll try and hold two until I get at least two bars back to back of negative momentum. Then I'll start maybe looking for an exit. Uh, just something interesting to note on SPY. Uh, the other thing, the squeeze works on any time frame, monthly, weekly, daily, 78 minutes, 65 minute, five minute, five minutes about the lowest I'll go on the squeeze. So if you're looking for day trade opportunities, I mean, this certainly could be a good example. I'm going to pull up Tesla here real quick. I should probably end this video, but I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I, I just love the squeeze. All right, Tesla, I do believe you remember right about here. Back to strategy. So we went into a squeeze here, right? Bollinger bands inside. We moved up here. Briefly, they went out and the squeeze fired. The price came back down. Look what happened on the move. Even before we went and, you know, and kind of broke out, price moved up. Bollinger bands moved outside, right? And look at it's It's like you're compressing a spring. I mean, it's like poof, look at that. price is all the way up. And, and uh, granted, it's Tesla. I know it, it runs, but I can cherry pick examples, which is what I'm doing. Uh, but we can see, I mean, once it's compressed, boom, there it goes. So that, again, that's really all the squeeze does is just identify periods of consolidation. And then you can use other forms of confluence or whatever your trading plan has for, for finding an entry. For my options plays personally, I don't play options unless I have a squeeze on because I, I for my trading plan, I want to 
at least have that ex uh, agreed and expected move. Yeah, we talked about Fiverr. That was a good one. SE, TDoc. Oh, pins. I mean, that, there's another one right there, right? Look at Pinterest on the daily chart. Uh, we are TTM squeeze right now. Now, I know we had been up here and it kind of broke out. Me personally, I would not have entered pins there, at least on uh, on options, because of the momentum indicators moving downwards. And of course, we can see the evening star and we came back down. And now here, nice double bottom, right? And we're back above. We had a nice close candle. Got a retest 50% of this candle. The momentum indicator is technically moving to the upside. I'm in pins. So, I mean, that, that certainly could be a spot you could enter with the mindset of, hey, I'm going to get a greater than expected move to the upside. Anyway, that's the TTM squeeze in a nutshell. Like I guess I'm a huge fan of this indicator simply because it's just so easy to use. All it is is something that tells me, hey, well, we're squeezing right now. What else can I look at? That's about all I have for today's video. Uh, again, if you made it through to the end of this, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about the squeeze, I'm happy to answer anything that I can. Just message me in Slack. Like I said, this is one of the, the more successful uh, trading plans that I've used. I use it for, for, like I said, for stocks, but primarily for my options trades. Appreciate you looking or uh, listening. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. All right, guys. Thanks. See ya.